Ever wondered why some employees seem more driven than others? What fuels their motivation? Let's dive into the fascinating world of human resource and development, where motivation is a potent force that propels individuals towards achievement and growth. It's the invisible energy that keeps the wheels of an organization turning, and understanding it can be a game changer in any business environment. Motivation, in the context of HR and development, is the process of stimulating people to actions to accomplish desired goals. It's a psychological phenomenon that converts abilities into performance. It's the driving force that leads people to work with vigor, commitment, and excitement. Think about it. When employees are motivated, they are more productive. They bring their best selves to work, finding joy and satisfaction in their tasks. This isn't just good for them, it's great for the organization too. Higher productivity means better results and job satisfaction leads to lower turnover rates. But what motivates employees? What makes them go that extra mile, even when no one is watching? These are the questions that have intrigued psychologists and management professionals alike. To answer them, they've come up with several theories, each offering a unique perspective on what drives human behavior at work. There's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, suggesting that we're driven by a series of physiological and psychological needs. Then there's Hertzberg's two-factor theory, pointing out that job satisfaction and dissatisfaction are influenced by different factors. We also have Vroom's expectancy theory, which proposes that motivation is about the relationship between effort, performance, and outcomes. Then there's the reinforcement theory, which suggests that behavior is a function of its consequences, and the equity theory, which posits that we're driven by our perceptions of fairness. And let's not forget theory X and Y, which offers two contrasting views of human nature and work behavior. Every single one of these theories gives us a piece of the puzzle. They help us understand why motivation is such a powerful force in human resource and development. Understanding the theories of motivation can help us unlock these mysteries. After all, in the intricate dance of human behavior, knowledge is power. First, let's dive into Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This theory, proposed by psychologist Abraham Maslow, suggests that our motivation stems from a hierarchy of needs, each building upon the one before it. At the base of this pyramid are our physiological needs like food and water. Once these are met, we seek safety a sense of security and freedom from fear. Climbing further, we crave love and belonging, which encompasses friendships, intimacy, and family. After satisfying these social needs, we strive for esteem, respect from others, as well as self-respect. We yearn for recognition, status, and success. Finally, at the pinnacle of the pyramid is self-actualization. This level is about fulfilling our potential and becoming the best version of ourselves. By understanding these five levels, we can gauge what motivates people, and thus, how to inspire employees in a workplace setting. Maslow's theory teaches us that motivation is a complex process driven by our basic needs and our desire for growth. Next, we explore Hertzberg's two-factor theory. This intriguing framework suggests that there are two distinct types of factors that influence job satisfaction and productivity. First, we have hygiene factors. These elements like working conditions, salary, and job security don't necessarily motivate, but their absence can cause dissatisfaction. In essence, they're necessary, but not sufficient for a happy, productive employee. Now let's move on to the second set of factors called motivators. These are elements like recognition, responsibility, and opportunities for growth. They have the power to inspire and drive employees, leading to increased job satisfaction and productivity. The beauty of Hertzberg's theory lies in the distinction between these two sets of factors. It's not simply about avoiding dissatisfaction, but actively promoting satisfaction, which requires a nuanced approach. Hertzberg's theory reminds us that job satisfaction and dissatisfaction are not two sides of the same coin, but two different coins altogether. Now let's delve into Vroom's expectancy theory. This theory operates on three main components, expectancy, instrumentality, and valence. Expectancy is the belief that increased effort will lead to increased performance. It's the I know I can mindset. Instrumentality is the idea that if you perform well, then a valid outcome will be there. It's the I think I will get what's promised belief. Lastly, valence is the importance that the individual places upon the expected outcome. It's the I value what I receive notion. These three components work together to create motivation. 
When an employee believes that their efforts will lead to good performance, that good performance will lead to a specific outcome and that the outcome will be worthwhile and valuable to them, then they are motivated to act. Vroom's theory tells us that motivation is a product of an employee's expectation of a positive outcome. Let's now turn our attention to the reinforcement and equity theories. Reinforcement theory, proposed by psychologist B.F. Skinner, is all about influencing behavior through the use of positive and negative reinforcements. Positive reinforcement involves presenting a motivating item to a person after a desired behavior is exhibited, making it more likely that the behavior will occur again. For instance, a manager might praise an employee for a job well done. On the other hand, negative reinforcement involves the removal of an undesired outcome after the desired behavior is exhibited. For example, if an employee completes their work on time, they might not have to stay late, thus removing the undesired outcome of working overtime. But it's not all about rewards. The equity theory, developed by John Stacy Adams, introduces the concept of fairness into the equation. This theory posits that employees constantly compare their job inputs and outcomes with those of others. Inputs can be anything from hard work and loyalty to commitment and ability. Outcomes, on the other hand, are the results of their efforts, their salary, recognition, benefits and promotions. According to this theory, employees who perceive inequity will seek to reduce it, either by altering their inputs or outcomes, changing their reference person, or even leaving the job. The key takeaway here is that perceptions of fairness are vital in maintaining employee motivation and satisfaction. These two theories, reinforcement and equity, highlight the importance of understanding human behavior in the workplace. They show us that motivation is not a one-size-fits-all concept. It's not just about rewards or punishments, but also about how employees perceive their treatment in comparison to others. So the next time you're looking to boost motivation in your workplace, remember to consider not only the individual rewards and reinforcements, but also the overall perception of fairness and equity. These theories show us that motivation is not only about rewards, but also about fairness and consistency. Finally, we come to theory X and Y. These theories introduced by social psychologist Douglas McGregor present two contrasting models of workforce motivation based on different assumptions about human nature and behavior at work. First, let's look at Theory X. This perspective assumes that employees inherently dislike work and will avoid it if possible. It suggests that workers need to be coerced, controlled, or threatened with punishment to achieve goals. In this model, managers believe that employees lack ambition, resist change, and prefer to be directed. On the other hand, Theory Y asserts that work is as natural as play or rest for employees. It believes that people are self-motivated and enjoy the mental and physical activity of work. According to this theory, employees seek out and accept responsibility under the right conditions. They can be innovative and creative, and their talents are often underused in the workplace. Now you're probably wondering, what are the implications of these theories for management style? Well, a manager's belief in Theory X or Theory Y can greatly influence their approach to motivation. A Theory X manager might adopt an authoritarian style, focusing on punishments to enforce compliance. They may believe that their employees need to be closely supervised and controlled. This could result in a restrictive work environment, potentially stifling creativity and innovation. Conversely, a Theory Y manager might adopt a more participative style, aiming to empower employees. They believe that giving employees freedom will make them more productive. This approach can foster a more open and creative work environment, but it may also require more trust and flexibility from the manager. In reality, most managers fall somewhere on the spectrum between Theory X and Theory Y. It's important to remember that these theories aren't definitive descriptions of employee behavior, but rather, they're lenses through which we can view motivation. Theory X and Y remind us that our assumptions about human nature can greatly influence our approach to motivation. So, what have we learned about motivation in human resource and development? We discovered that Maslow's hierarchy of needs offers us a roadmap to meeting employees' physiological, safety, belonging, esteem, and self-actualization needs. Hertzberg's two-factor theory, on the other hand, reminds us that job satisfaction and job dissatisfaction are not two sides of the same coin but separate entities influenced by different factors. 
We delved into Vroom's expectancy theory, understanding how employees' performance is influenced by their expectations of the outcome and how much they value that outcome. We explored the reinforcement and equity theories, which emphasize the power of rewards and fairness in motivating employees. Finally, Theory X and Y offered us two contrasting assumptions about human nature and work behavior, influencing how we manage and motivate our teams. Subscribe for more because you won't find me later. Let's continue exploring the fascinating world of human resource and development together.